Welp, the wait is finally over, my friends. We sat through some husbandos. We sat through the lollies. We sat through quite a few little twinky femboys, okay? But it's finally here, the first waifu banner in Genshin Impact. Gone you. For me, uh, I've only really played Azure Lane as far as gacha games go, so I've been spoiled, and this has been... Let's just say, you know, I was itching at the seams for this Ice Goat GF right here. And the best thing about it is that Ganyu is a beast. It made the wait so much more worth it when I plugged her in and I saw them big ass crits. No, no, I'm, I said crits. Those big ass crits. Yeah, because let me tell you guys, she is putting out them big number hitters, okay? Once you get her all set up, this girl is going to be putting out them huge numbers, let me tell you. But this is an RPG, and I know for some people it might be a little confusing on how we get those big numbers. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I personally set her up, and just give you some tips on what to put on her and how to play her. Before I get into the video though, I'd just like to mention that I do stream Genshin Impact several nights a week on this YouTube channel, so if you'd like, please subscribe and stop by a stream sometime. It's fun, you know, I'm chatting about this and that, Genshin Impact, the animes, other games. Come chat with me, please, I'd really appreciate it. So let's first talk about Ganyu's second to second gameplay. What Ganyu is, is basically our first 5 star bow user in the game. Now I know we had Tartalia, but let's be honest, he barely uses that bow. What I'm talking about is that sniper type gameplay. Ganyu focuses mostly on charged shots, and that's where most of her damage is going to come from. And let me show you why here. So if we go into Ganyu's abilities here, we look at her normal attacks, the first thing you might notice is that her charged attack is different from any that we've seen before, and that it has two levels to it. The charge level 1 is just like your traditional charged attack, it does cryo damage instead of physical damage, whereas the charge level 2 is what you want here. This is called the Frost Flake Arrow. It just deals additional cryo damage, as well as blooms, which is going to deal even more damage in an AoE. That AoE Frostflake Arrow Bloom damage is where you see those big crits. In this video and any other Ganyu highlight video that you'll watch, that Bloom damage is where the bulk of her damage comes from. And uh, you're going to want to focus on these charge level 2 shots for most of her gameplay. Her E ability, or her elemental skill, whatever you want to call it, is similar to Amber's or Mona's ability in that it leaves behind something that will taunt enemies to attack it. It's not like Mona's in that it doesn't do continual damage, it's only going to do damage when you press E, and also when it explodes, when the enemies um, kill it. It has an HP pool, which is also different from those other two. Um, it doesn't do that much damage, especially compared to Frostflake Arrow and its bloom, but the utility of the taunt is really nice, and if you're using Ganyu as a support, um, just the cryo application two times, as well as just a good amount of damage if you build her right is going to be really helpful in enabling your other characters to do even more damage. Now her ultimate ability is arguably one of the best in the game right now. It's similar again to Amber's in that it does um, AoE damage and just rains down cryo damage instead of pyro damage that Amber does. Um, one thing that this doesn't mention is that each of the shards that come down in that AoE deal AoE damage themselves. So what this really benefits from is when you get a bunch of enemies really close to each other and each shard that drops on an individual enemy is also going to deal AoE damage. And if you get them like real clumped, it is just going to be damage city and I'll talk more about that later. Now if you really want to see them big numbers, you're going to need to deck her out in the right equipment. This is an RPG after all. So let's first talk about the best weapons that you can find for Ganyu. As far as main DPS Ganyu goes, which is honestly what you should be playing her as, the Amos Bow is going to be your best option. This is a 5 star, so I know that a lot of people might not have it. I was lucky enough to get it as my first 5 star weapon on the standard banner. Um, I wasn't too excited back then, I'll be honest, but I'm very pleased now. Um, it's kind of just made for Ganyu. I'm pretty sure they designed it around her. If you look at all of her promotional material, she's she has the Amos Bow. If you look at the color scheme, I mean, come on, it matches. But anyways, it has attack percent as the substat, and the ability increases charge attack damage. You know, Ganyu's doing a lot of charge attacks, so that's just perfect. This is the best main DPS option. 
Uh, as far as cheaper options go for main DPS, I personally don't have this one, but the craftable prototype crescent is going to be the next best option. Um, it's got attack percent on it, and it increases your damage when you do charged attacks, which once again, Ganyu does a lot of those. This is a free to play weapon too. If Honestly, most people, people should have this at this point if you've been doing bosses. Um, so it's very accessible. If you don't have Amos Bow, go for this. Another option um, that I haven't tried out yet, but I did see a few people on Reddit trying it out, and it looked pretty powerful. I'm not going to lie to you guys. This Viridescent Hunt, the Battle Pass weapon, one, it's got crit rate, which is amazing on Ganyu. Um, and second, the ability Verdant Wind is almost like a mini venti ult. It has a 50% chance to generate a cyclone, which will pull a bunch of enemies together. And it deals 40% attack, so it's doing damage. And if you remember, I was talking about her ult uh, doing massive amounts of damage when they're clumped together as close as possible. So this is really fun with her ult. I was seeing just a lot of death going on when uh, they were using this bow. Uh, as far as support Ganyu goes, I would say that the best option for support DPS is going to be the other 5 star bow, Skyward Harp, which of course I don't have, but it's got energy recharge, and it'll have the highest base attack. That's going to be your best option. For 4 stars, I would go a Stringless. This is kind of your go-to support bow. Um, there's a ton of support bows, you know, Sack Bow, Pavonius War Bow, but the best will be Stringless for her. Elemental Mastery, you'll be getting some good melts or whatever you're looking for off and uh, increased damage to her ult and her E. Um, but yeah, that's kind of your best options for support. Of course, if you don't somehow have any four stars at all, just use whatever you got the highest attack on. But honestly, <clears throat> if you don't have any four stars, I would go for the craftable prototype crescent. Those will be the best weapons for Ganyu. Now let's talk about the artifacts that you want to put on Ganyu, which is pretty much the biggest factor in getting those huge numbers that you want to see. As far as set bonuses go, I'm currently running a 4-piece Blizzard Strayer set, which increases your crit rate by 20% when they're affected by Cryo, which is pretty much all the time on Ganyu, and an additional 20% of crit rate if the opponent is frozen, which is really beneficial if you have a Mona, a Xingqiu, or a Barbara, any Hydro character. Um, other than that, the best option that I'm currently working on getting, wasn't able to pull it uh, together in time for her release, but the Wanderer's Troop bonus, um, the four piece bonus, increases your charge attack damage by 35%. You guys already know that Ganyu is gonna be doing mostly charge attacks, so this is a huge increase to her damage. Um, I have heard that it does increase the bloom damage as well, which is really big. This is what I'm gonna be running for most of the time once I get a good set built up. Um, other set bonuses you could do are a two-piece Blizzard Strayer for the cryo damage bonus, paired with a Gladiator two-piece for the attack percent bonus. <clears throat> Other than that, these are probably your best main DPS um, sets. And honestly, if you focus on building her as a main DPS artifact-wise, she's going to do great even if you have her in a support role. I don't think it's really worth um, focusing on support stats with her like Energy Recharge or Elemental Mastery. As far as stats on the artifacts themselves go, um, obviously you can't change the feather and the flower. You're going to want attack percent on your timepiece. Cryo damage bonus on your goblet is a really big deal. For your off piece, if you're doing a four set, I would definitely prioritize the cryo damage bonus from the goblet or crit damage slash crit rate on your circlet. I think those are probably the most important for really any main DPS. Um, one thing that I wanted to talk about is why I'm happy with the Blizzard Strayer set right now. And because of some mistakes that I made when building this, I didn't focus on crit rate very much at all. I figured, oh, Ganyu is going to get the great crit rate increases from the four piece Blizzard Strayer. Um, she also has the talent that increases uh, crit rate by 20% when you do a charged attack. I said, nah, I'll be fine. I don't need crit rate. But as you can see, the end result of that is I almost have 200% crit damage, but 18% crit rate, which is definitely not enough. 
I'm basically pigeonholed into using Blizzard Strayer set right now and pairing her with a Chi Chi or a Diona in my party so I can get that increased crit rate from uh, Cryo Residence. Um, I would, so that's my advice to you is just to focus more on both crit rate and crit damage and not just so much crit damage in the substats. Um, other substats that'll be good are of course attack percent. Elemental Mastery is good if you're going to be using her um, support capabilities as well as energy recharge to keep that ult up. Um, that's going to be her best artifacts. One more thing to mention, I'm sitting here editing, I'm looking through my notes, and I completely forgot to mention the Noblesse Oblige set, which is going to be pretty much the best in slot set that you can get for support Ganyu. Not so much main DPS Ganyu, it's going to give her 20% extra damage on her elemental burst um, for the two-piece bonus, and for the four-piece bonus, you'll get 20% extra attack for your whole party every time you use that burst. Ganyu's pretty much going to be a burst bot when you're using her as support, so this is a very good set for her. Keep in mind, though, that if you're running like a Bennett or anyone else with a four-piece bonus, uh, Noblesse Oblige, the effects do not stack. So you can't like pop Bennett's ult, get the 20% attack from Noblesse, switch to Ganyu, pop her ult, and get an additional 20%. It's only going to be one. So... If you're running her with Bennett with a four piece, I definitely go with maybe a two piece bonus, no bless, and then maybe a two piece Blizzard Strayer for the cryo damage. Uh, just wanted to mention that before we move on. Another very important factor in doing as much damage as possible on Ganyu is pairing her with the right party. This is kind of the main party I've been using currently. I have Ganyu as main DPS, Mona as a support DPS, Venti as a support, I really do much DPS with him, and Chi Chi as a support healer. Um, of course I have Chi Chi here for the cryo resonance, as I said I'm lacking on crit rate, so that's why I really need Chi Chi. If you don't have Chi Chi, you might put Diona here, Diona is a great healer as well, as well as just overall support. Um, Mona I love having because of the freeze. Um, freeze will let you bypass a lot of mechanics. One of the things that Ganyu struggles with the most is big hill churls with big shields and just shields in general. But when you freeze them, you can kind of get behind them and bypass the shields. Otherwise, even if you're behind a big rock wall healy churl, he's going to block that damage, which is really annoying. The freeze comp can really help with that. And uh, using Mona here, you could use Jing Chu or Barbara as well. It's going to help you get those freezes off and uh, prevent the shields from working. Uh, you're also going to get that big crit rate increase if you're running Blizzard Strayer set like I am. So that's the reason I've been going with Mona. I have heard that if you run Jing Chu, it's a little more difficult because the way that Jing Chu's E works is that you have to normal attack, not charged attack, to apply the uh, wet debuff onto an enemy. So what you'd have to do is kind of do a charge attack and weave in those normal attacks with Zing Chu's ease up to uh, keep applying the freeze damage, which is a little obnoxious. Personally, if I didn't have Mona, I'd probably run Barbara instead. Um, Venti is really good. I also run Sucrose in Abyss, depending on uh, what my other team looks like. Venti will get them all together, clump them all together for her ult, and the shards will just come down and do those AoE damage. It just, if you pair Ganyu, Mona, and Venti ult, it's just, you know, instant death. I have, I have a couple examples here that I'll show. As far as other team comps go, um, I haven't experimented too much with a melt comp, but sometimes I'll run Klee here instead of Mona and uh, just throw out Klee's E. I think she's a great fire support. Obviously, her ultimate isn't great for supporting just because it doesn't stick around when you uh, uh, switch off of her. Another option if you didn't have Klee would be Zhongling, where is she? Or Amber. Um, Zhongling is a great way to just kind of switch her on real fast, get some pyro damage out on the field, and switch her back. Um, the Melt will definitely increase your damage. I haven't tried it out too much. I think the Freeze comp is really my favorite so far. Um, but other than that, sometimes I'll run Bennett too. Bennett, of course, is just kind of so flexible. You can really put him in any comp. And he's going to shine. Where is he? I got too many characters, huh? There he is. And if you run him, of course, with Klee or uh, Zhongling, you'll get the Fire Resonance, which is going to increase damage by 25%, which is great. I think it's definitely a necessity to have either Venti or Sucrose here, um, just because 
grouping all those enemies together, the CC that they provide, the crowd control, is gonna, just going to be great for Ganyu's ult. As far as support comps goes, you really can't go wrong when you put Ganyu in any team. That's my favorite part about Ganyu is that she's a great main DPS, but even if I get tired of her as main DPS or someone better comes along, I can imagine that she'll be in my team for a very long time. Even when Ayaka comes out, um, that cryo damage swordsman that is allegedly going to come out with Inazuma, I think that Ganyu is still going to be the best support. Um, Cryo is just so lucrative in the game right now, and it's key to many of the best elemental reactions. If you're running with D. Luke here, you're going to be getting consistent melts off with D. Luke, um, almost comparable to what Mona or Xing Chu would do. If you run her with one of these, uh, one of the electro physical DPS guys like Kaching or Razor, you're going to be getting superconduct on like 100% of the time on all of your enemies. Um, just great for any elemental reactions. If you have a child, you know, you get, I don't have child. He's the only five star character I have. Don't judge me. Um, but you know, you'll be getting the freeze off real easy. It's just going to be like constant CC. Ganyu is the most flexible support in the game, or at least one of them next to like Venti and fish. She's just going to be a great support Throw her in any, any team and she's going to just boost them up. And lastly, guys, before we wrap it up, I just want to share with you some clips that I've captured over the last couple days of my Ganyu. If you guys can't tell, I am simping for Ganyu, okay? I was simping for her before she came out, I saw all the pictures, I loved her, I thought she was gonna be great, and I am very pleased to say that she overshot my expectations, as well as I feel like a lot of other people's expectations. She's one of the best main DPS in the game. She's one of the best supports in the game. And definitely top three waifus. I don't know about you guys, but exploring with this girl, just look at the views when you're exploring with this girl. The best, best main DPS, best support, and best waifu, in my humble opinion. But anyways, guys, I hope that this guide helped you out a little bit. Um, I hope you can reach your full potential with Ganyu. She's a great character, and I think we'll all be using her for a very long time if you do pull for her. 
Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Subscribe to my channel. I do stream Genshin Impact and put out a lot more Genshin Impact videos than just this one. So please subscribe if you'd like. Until next time though, enjoy your Ice Goat GF. We'll see you next time.